This primarily happened to my mom, but this has badly affected me mentally too with worry. She wanted me to post this just to give people a heads up that you can encounter creeps literally anywhere. This is going to be a long-winded story, sorry, but I just wanted to get in every detail possible. This happened last month and we still don't actually know what happened with Jeremy in the end. My main 19 year old female, who was studying in a university in England, entering my second year last month, we decided to stay in my university town the day before I was due to move in my student home, so I could get there early and move my stuff in and give me the rest of the day to relax before we started at Freshers Week. The night before moving day, me and my mother stayed in a hotel located in my university town. We were greeted by a friendly man called Jeremy. Jeremy was very attentive and showed us to our room and stayed around 10 minutes telling us the history of the hotel and repeatedly asked us if we needed help unpacking and stuff, which we kindly rejected. It was a Friday so me and my mother went around the town and had a few drinks, nothing too heavy. As a freshers week started the next day so I wanted to be fresh for the Saturday night. Before going out, Jeremy explained that he never works weekends, so he told us to have a good night and wished me luck with the rest of my university journey. He gave me a hug and gave my mother a hug and I slight kissed while moving his hand down towards her bum, which she found weird but brushed it off as nothing. My mom is 37 but looks young for her age, and Jeremy is easily in his 40s, so we just thought that Jeremy may have fancied his chances with her. Moving on, me and my mom have a great night around the town, and watch a couple of live bands and have a few wines so we are a little on the tipsy side. We get back to the hotel and the bar is still open, so we decide to have a nightcap. While we are having a drink at the bar, Jeremy emerges from a back room and spots us and makes a couple of jokes. Jeremy then proceeds to watch a video on his phone on full volume of a woman screaming at the top of her lungs as she was being murdered. The screaming was blood curdling and made me and my mom unsettled and also another couple in the bar looked a little concerned as well. The video went on for 3 or 4 minutes before Jeremy laughed and went into the back. When we make our way to bed, my mom had taken her shoes off after they had become painful after dancing in the bars earlier. Jeremy emerges from the back room and puts his arm around my mom and says, Oh, let me help you to your room, honey. You must be wasted after all that drinking. My mom isn't actually that drunk and insists that she's fine. But Jeremy persists and basically follows us to our room and proceeds to come in. But I bid him goodnight and close the door pretty much in his face before locking it. The next morning, we are up early and make our way down for breakfast. The young girl working takes our breakfast order, only for Jeremy to bring them out insisting the eggs were cooked to perfection, although he claimed he never worked weekends. Me and my mom are weirded out by Jeremy at this point and check out straight after breakfast. Jeremy sees us out and says these exact words. I'll be seeing you very soon, Christy. My mother's name. Anyway, at the time, it didn't strike us as unusual and my mom drives us to my new home and helps me unpack and stuff. She helps me to unpack and then leaves in the early afternoon as she had to work that evening in our local bar. The rest of the day goes by without much going on, but that night I'm out drinking with my housemates and I get a call from my mom saying that Jeremy had just come into the bar that she works at. This is no coincidence as when we were having a nightcap, Jeremy would have heard us talking about the bar where my mom works. And he also had our address which needed to be provided at the hotel for whatever reason. He had also said to my mom when she was pouring his pint that 
she would go around to his friend's house after a shift, which was just around the corner. This call really scared the crap out of me. About half an hour later, my mom called me and said that Jeremy had left the bar after she rejected his offer to go to his friend's house later. But Jeremy had said he'd be back for her later. This was really worrying and I told her to make sure a customer was with her as she was locking up on her own that evening. After this call, I felt sick and didn't join my friends in going to the nightclubs. In the meantime, I called my dad who no longer speaks to my mom. They aren't on bad terms, they just chose not to keep in contact with each other after they split a few years ago. My dad is a club bouncer, but he wasn't on duty that night. But I called him and begged him to just drive down there and make sure everything was okay. My dad clearly knew by my shaky voice that I was panicked, scared, and helpless. 1am rolled around and I didn't get a response from either my mom or my dad's phone. I was worried sick and hoped that Jeremy hadn't been waiting around the corner and done something to my mom when she was locking up. At 1.30am, my mom finally rang me in hysterics. As she had been locking up, Jeremy had pulled up in a car with three other men and shouted for her to get in for a ride. My mom declined his advances and he got out of the car and approached her and told her that he wouldn't tell her again. He said that she had been flirting and teasing him ever since she had checked in last night. She told Jeremy that that was complete BS and she wasn't into him at all. As Jeremy got closer to her, she could smell heavy liquor. As Jeremy went to grab my mom, my dad pulls up behind the car and beeps his horn. This causes Jeremy to go back to the car and climb back in, and tells my mom that he knows where she lives and that he'll be waiting. The car screeches off. My dad then gets out of his car and tells her that I told him to check on her. Scared to go home alone, she asked my dad to drop her off at my grandparents as she didn't want to be alone. After that night, we never saw Jeremy again. But my mom did make a report to the police about him and gave them a full account of what had happened. But she hasn't heard back from them. I'm just so relieved that my dad turned up to the pub when he did, as Jeremy would have been able to easily get my mom into that car, as she is only very small in stature, 5'2 and around 120 pounds. I just hope that scumbag got what was coming to him and is behind bars. My mom has been pretty badly affected by this and is only now comfortable being alone in her house. So Jeremy, I hope you rot in hell, and let's never ever meet again. Precursor, I've aged since then. I do not fall for these tricks as easily as I did then. I still hope for the good in people but I usually doubt it's there for a while. I went to beauty school just after high school, so I was learning what it was like to be an adult, work, and go to school and socialize all at the same time. If you've ever gone to beauty school, you know the hours are pretty lengthy, and it's a lot of work in a short amount of time. You also know that you're mostly crammed with a lot of women of different ages and a few boys. If you're a straight man in the school, and he's even mildly attractive, obviously considering you're attracted to that type of person, most women in school are just so at all because it's the only male person we are seeing during most of our weeks. That takes me to Dave, a few years older than me, tall, drives a Ducati to school, mysterious and handsome. Every girl was always putting on a little extra makeup turning their hips towards him, flirting when he was around. He was cute, quiet, and always knew what to say. I wasn't as interested in catching his eye till he randomly asked me to meet up with him for a bite one day after school. I was single and needed to experience dating for the first time, and he didn't seem that bad to hang out with. Things started off pretty sweet and genuine, 
He had sent goodnight texts, jokes with me at school, and even genuinely seemed like he wanted to hang out more and more. We would go to bars and he knew everyone so I could just get right in. I was underage at the time. We would go to eat, see shows, two-step, drink. I felt like I was starting to feel like an adult, enjoying the life and being wooed by a handsome, slightly older man. We would drive around on his bike. He would take me to nice, quiet dinners. Always offered to pay and even did little things like hold his arm when I walked downstairs or off a curb. I have never experienced this type of gentleman before. But as quickly as these sweet dates came, so did a very weird, calculated, and controlling behavior. He would start to ask why I didn't smile with my teeth. Was it because I was embarrassed of myself? He would sit behind me working at school and taunt me about how slow I was. He would say things like, Don't sit like that or say things that way. That's not what ladies do. And I'm a lady, right? Don't wear that lipstick, it's trashy. But I guessed maybe I was being inappropriate. Maybe he's right. I should act more like an adult than a child. Be better at school. Look more like an adult. He brought me to his house one night, a place that he rented a room from. And suddenly, this stoic, Edward Cullen type turned into a person I didn't recognize, outside of the random mood shift. His room was filled with clothing and garbage, like old Gatorade bottles filling the floors. There was a TV and a bed, of all the things I could really make out in this room. He brushed dirt off of his bed for me to sit down. We hung out for a while and he oddly confessed he never brushes his teeth. Okay, well, looking in this room, I could believe that. He also mentioned that he just bought new clothes when he needed them and never washed the dirty ones, so he just left them there. This was all in the first two to three weeks. Kind of a red flag if you ask me. The lights were off at one point, and we were watching a TV show. I see a light like a cell phone right outside the window behind the TV. I jump in get his attention, but he had to have seen. He brushes it off, saying that it might just be his roommate, though I noticed he's texting someone at the same time. I let it go for the night, eventually go home, but still feel uncomfortable. Then the phone calls started happening and these stories of his ex. They lived together. She was 10 years older than him and had a 6 year old kid. She was crazy. If he and I would hang out, I would suddenly start getting calls from an unknown number the minute that I walked at my door. They would ring till my voicemail got them and no one would say a word till the message ran out of time. They would happen every 10 minutes or 3 hours or so. I asked him about this, if it was him, and he said that it may just be his crazy ex. But how would she have my number? He would say, well, I had to give her some of her things and she stole my phone at one point and must have taken your number. Still, the gentlemanly dates would happen, and the gifts, all the gifts, sending roses and coffee to my work. Showing up with massage and spa packages every week. We still saw each other at beauty school almost daily. And he would be kind but it was always hush hush until it was outside of school. I was torn. Is this person lying? Or is this the first kind person to want to date me? Maybe he just had some flaws and a crazy ex. And then the texts and Facebook messages started coming, clarifying it was her. He's told me about your messed up life and secrets that you've told him. I know he just saw you. I know you were just at his house. I was outside the window looking in. Your red dress was nice. He laughs about you. Poor you, just a little girl. And crap like that over and over. I would block her then, and she would have friends send me the same BS. 
She freaked me out and he always denied it and apologized for her behavior. And then there were days he wouldn't show up for school and she would text me during the day saying they were together, sending pictures of him. I tried to confront him but he would always deny having anything to do with her and repeating that she wanted to ruin his life. And then she started going to my work, telling my coworkers she was my friend and would color things on kids menus like Boy Slayer 666 plus Dave Heart Her and tell them that she wanted me to have it. She would send me a random picture of him in a booth at my work, and I would put the pieces together when I got there and got her notes, asking my coworkers where she was sitting and what she looked like. It was gross and embarrassing, let alone scary. My car was broken into at school and nothing was taken from it but a bill that had my address on it. I was then so scared. I could come out at any point in time and she would start calling over and over as soon as I closed the door behind me. I felt trapped. She would call my work and school saying that she was my mom and try to get more info on me or call them as a customer trying to get me fired. My roommates finally kicked me out because they were rightfully frightened so I turned to the police. They put me in contact with a detective who I handed all the calls, texts, and messages plus notes that she left in my work. I never answered the phone or responded to a single message from her. I had hundreds of calls, texts for at least a month. They came in every day from the same number. I never blocked that number after the first few were blocked so I could keep a log of all the attempts. Plus, I kept a journal of every incident leading up to me calling the police, just in case. I watch a lot of crime docs. He told me that there was nothing he could do to trace the number back to a specific person. Man, since she hadn't threatened my physical safety, his hands were tied. The very next day, he calls me and is furious, telling me he can't help me if I'm harassing her back. I was confused and when I asked what the heck he meant, he said, You're calling a mother non-stop throughout the night, terrifying her and her kid. Because I was the 20 year old and she was 36, of course he's going to believe the adult but I never called her. He asked me to come to his office to show me his evidence he has against me. And she forwarded him tons of texts saying things like, I hope that she loses her kid and I just broke down. I would never say something like that to someone. And I know, I didn't send these tens of texts especially overnight when I had school the next day. But he didn't believe me and he dismissed me. He ultimately turned against me and was now on her side. This was crushing. I broke things off for good with Dave, basically told him to leave me alone. We still had to go to school together and he was a complete dick. I embarrassed myself in front of my friends at defending him so long. My work, my school, who I had to beg to make sure this girl didn't come around again. And a detective who ultimately didn't believe a word I said, just to get some peace. My friends were tired of seeing me, scared, stressed, and constantly talking about this weird situation happening to me. I was over it all. She finally left me alone once I moved, got a new car, a new phone, and deleted social media. But it still freaks me out to this day that we all live in the same town. She messaged me a few years ago from a different account when I was back on social media and said she was sorry, that she was manipulated by Dave and that they did this to many girls. This was disturbing and gut-wrenching to me. Did a mother of a six-year-old really have nothing better to do than play messed up games with a sociopath? Maybe two sociopaths together, I guess. I don't know. Dave and your ex. Let's not ever meet again. When I was 17, I started working at my local grocery store. 
About three weeks in, I got transferred from the front end, baggers and cashiers to produce. My first week in produce, I met all the people in my department and all was going well. One night on my second week in produce, I was closing alone when this girl comes in. My back turned to her, I hear her. Oh, you're new. When did you start? I turn around and we start having a conversation while I put the last few things from my cart on the shelf. I had about 10 minutes left in my shift and I was trying to go downstairs to crush my boxes. But this girl continued to talk and took no social cues that I was trying to leave. I finally get tired of listening to her talk and I start to pull my cart through the produce section as she slowly follows still talking. Eventually, we get to the employees only door, and I start to make my way through and she comes in right after me. I explain that unfortunately, she can't come this way, and she needs to just go check out as our store was closing soon. She says bye and then leaves, and I thought it was odd, but maybe she's just a bit weird. I crush my boxes and go home, and I don't think about it. Two days later, I'm closing again and the same thing happens. This time, she asked for my phone number. I explained that I didn't have a phone at this time, hence why I had a job so I could get one. Okay, well, would you want to hang out when you get off? I felt kind of bad at this point as I thought she was just a bit odd and looking for friends. I tell her maybe next time, as my mom was picking me up. So every night I worked, she would come in and just pick up one grapefruit and then walk around basically acting like she was either on the phone or pretending to shop and then casually stop by me. It got old really quick, to the point of where I would hide in the hallway and watch her till she left. Eventually, other people in my store heard about her and the rumors went around that she was stalking me. The deli manager explained that she and her boyfriend, she also worked in the deli, also had been stalked by her for a number of months. Eventually, she stopped coming by at night as I was always hiding when she did come. A few weeks go by and I had just gotten off of work. It was an early shift for a change. And my friends were meeting me at work to hang out after. Two guys and a girl. So, I head out to the parking lot and I meet up with them. When my stalker comes out of nowhere and hugs me. I haven't seen you at work in so long. Oh, yeah. They switched my hours so now I don't work late anymore. Well, one thing leads to another and my female friend starts to talk with her and basically invites her to hang out with us. She jumps on the opportunity. After, I explain to my friend that she was stalking me. And so we all start walking back to my friend's house to hang out in the backyard, as it was a nice summer night. The night wasn't bad. We all just hung out and kind of avoided the stalker, while my friend kept her entertained. The night came on pretty fast and eventually, it was 1am and my friend's mom came out and told us that we had to leave. Me and my two male friends and the stalker head out, and were waiting at the bus stop that my friend needed to catch, when the stalker explains that she can't go home this late and that she needed to stay over. So I beg my other friend to stay with me, which he agrees. We wait for the bus to pick up my other friend and then head to my house. Things got super weird at this point. So basically, the stalker refused to sleep on the floor and only wanted to sleep in bed with me. I eventually gave up and said, okay, well my friend has slept on the floor. So, I'm laying in bed and this girl just stands up and takes her clothes off and gets in bed with me. At first, I was pretty dumbfounded and didn't know what to do. So I acted like I didn't notice. And then she started to try to kiss me and grope me. At this point, I realized that this girl had issues. I lightly push her off of me and explain that I'm trying to sleep. She wouldn't take the hint and kept insisting that we cuddled. I was getting fed up and so eventually, I tried to wake up my friend. I'm pretty sure he wasn't asleep at this point anyway. Nathan, you asleep? He sits up. No, why? And so she covers up with the blanket so he doesn't see her naked. And then I basically explained that I wanted to go for a walk. And so I have Nathan leave the room and get her dressed so we could go for a walk. On our way out, I tell Nathan to get his bike. We walk outside at this point. It's almost 3.30 in the morning. Me and Nathan walking with our bikes and the girl beside us. 
I'm thinking of ways that we can get rid of this girl. At first, I suggest that Nathan and I just take a walk in the alley and go to the bathroom, but she says that she's scared and would want to go with us. Eventually, while walking and talking, she says that she's on the track team in high school. Oh, you run track. I bet you can't beat us to the end of the block. At this point, Nathan looks at me and smirks as he knows that we're about to ditch this girl. For it to be 3.30 in the morning, this girl was excited as hell to go sprinting. She takes off running for the end of the block, and we take off the opposite direction back towards my house. We rush back inside and hide our bikes at my house instead of the porch, and go to the living room making sure not to turn on any lights. We sit in the living room talking about how crazy this girl was when she starts banging on the door. We stayed quiet for what seemed like two to three hours of her just banging on the door, talking to herself, banging on the door and then talking to herself some more. Eventually, we heard the downstairs door open and we watched her leave. For reference, I lived on the second floor of an apartment building and my mom was out of town. So, the next few days I go to work and I don't see her which is good. And then about a week later she comes in and she completely ignores me. She gets her random grapefruit and pretends to shop while me and my coworker are talking. She is wearing a backpack this time and she walks right in between me and my coworker. We were maybe six feet apart. And she turns to walk away and her backpack touches something on my flat cart. She turns around and starts screaming and throws all the boxes off my cart. She starts saying that I grabbed her and that she wanted to talk to a manager and so my coworker, an older guy in his 40s, tells me to go downstairs and just to get away from the situation. I head downstairs and I sit in the break room. About 10 minutes later, I'm called up to the hallway where my store manager is talking to the girl. I see from the door that she leaves that he comes in the hallway to talk to me. So, this girl says that you grabbed her, you shoved her, and that you were swearing at her. I explain what happened to my manager and he goes and finds my coworker and then comes back to me after talking to him. My manager comes in and looks at me. We kind of chuckle and then he tells me, don't worry about it. Eventually, she left me alone but then my girlfriend started working with me. The girl would come in and see me and my girlfriend and then go to her line to check out and was always really rude to her. Eventually, she stopped coming around altogether and from the looks of it, she married some 50 year old man on Facebook. She's like 24. Hi everyone, I'm French so I apologize if my English isn't the best. I wanted to share an experience that still gives me chills. I was working in a carousel in a shopping mall, and this mall is known for being like the third biggest mall in Europe. Anyway, the first time that I worked here, yeah my parents owned it so when I had free time I would go here and work for a few hours after school. I was 13 and not really used to the Parisian life. I came from a small town in the south though, it was really weird for me to be here. But one day a guy, maybe 20 to 30 years old, was sitting on a bench and looking at me. He seemed really nice and at first I thought he was a parent or something looking at his child but he was completely alone and only looking at me. I awkwardly smiled and said, Hello, thinking that he needed some help. He kept smiling, and that's where I started to be scared. But I kept doing my work, looking at another bench to make him understand that I was uncomfortable. Maybe five minutes later, he moved, sitting on the bench that I was looking at. He was not really smiling, and he looked kind of disappointed. So I started looking up, because people could look at the carousel from there. When I looked down again, like 10 minutes later, the guy was gone. I thought he left, but he was still looking at me from the first floor, with that same smile. He stood there for an hour, and he continued changing spots so I would notice him. When I left work, he followed me, and so I told my coworker to accompany me until I got home. That was really creepy. Last year, I had a pause and I decided to go to the nearest bookshop, as I always did. And I found a book that I liked, some Tolkien book. And a guy, maybe 15 to 16, that looked at me and made a Tolkien reference. I laughed at his joke and then I just laughed. 
20 minutes later, the same guy was on a bench next to the carousel and he looked at me. I smiled and he came to see me and asked for my number. I said I couldn't give my number to strangers, but he insisted. I then asked for his number and told him that I would text him when I would be done with work. I obviously never texted him. He came back late two days later after that, but I didn't see him. I noticed him following me when I was in the same bookshop. I was moving randomly to see if he was really following me, and he was. So, I walked towards him and asked why he kept doing this. He said that he was in love with me, and that I reminded him of his ex-girlfriend and he really wanted to know me. I said that I was already in a relationship, and he said that it was okay. He could be a third wheel. So I said that I would text him whenever I felt like it, and he laughed. Maybe a month after that, I was going to a famous convention where I was cosplaying as a random maid. I was holding a free hugs cardboard sign with some random drawings on it. I was with two friends and we were having a lot of fun. When out of nowhere, someone jumped on me and hugged me. It was this dude. We called the security and he kept screaming like hell that I was the love of his life and that he would kill himself. Apparently he had asked my coworker why I wasn't at work and she thought that he was a friend of mine and said that I was going to the convention. Luckily, I never saw him after that. But he did have my number because my coworker gave it to him, and I blocked him of course. Another time, it was during December 2018, so I had two jobs but in the same shopping mall. A guy, again maybe 20 to 30 years old with long hair, was sitting on a bench next to the carousel and he kept looking at me. He sat there all day and I noticed that he was sometimes raising his phone and moved the phone in my direction as if he was taking a picture or filming me. I was 15 at the time so he wasn't supposed to take pictures of younger people. Plus the way he looked at me was really weird and I even caught him licking his lips while looking at me. I felt really uncomfortable but kept on working and didn't say anything. The next day I was working at my other job which was another carousel actually. It was here just for the Christmas holidays, and I didn't see the guy. But when I left my job and was waiting for my parents to get ready so we could leave, the guy sat next to me, like really close, and asked for my phone number. I said no and he looked down, like disappointed, and asked, Well, are you working tomorrow? I replied, I don't know, why's that? Because I like your body. He stood up and laughed. I was paralyzed really, and the next day I told my coworker, Lionel, another coworker by the way, it was a Romanian guy, about what had happened. I couldn't sleep that night and was really paranoid about everything around me. And then I saw the guy and told Lionel to ask him to stop following me like that. He came back with a huge smile, saying that I'm not really kidding. Oh, it's okay, you two will go out on a date. Apparently the guy told my coworker that he was a friend of mine and was messing with me. He said he was really shy and was playing this game so he would have the confidence to ask me on a date. I was feeling so strange as if I was going to fall or something. I stopped working this afternoon and I told my parents. They told me to stay with them and immediately tell them if I saw the guy. When we were leaving, I swear I saw the guy with a hoodie under the rain looking at me and taking pictures of the car. The next day, I was with another coworker, Marie. She's really protected by the way, she's like a sister to me. And I saw the guy on the bench next to the carousel. When I told her, she ran towards him and yelled at him, stuff that I couldn't hear, but I could see the guy's face and it was priceless. She came back with a big smile and the guy laughed. Apparently she said that she knows where he lives, and if she saw him around me for a second, she would blow his brains out. I never saw that guy again. When I was about 14 or 15 years old, my friend was having a birthday party at her house. It was only just girls until my boyfriend and another boyfriend of my friends attending the birthday girls party insisted that we leave her house and walk to the local high school so we could meet them and continue to hang out and have fun. It was around at 2 a.m. in the morning when we were walking down a straight main road that eventually led to the high school. All of a sudden, this hillbilly probably 40 years old drives past us, slows down and then stops and backs up to me and my two friends that were walking. 
He stopped right in front of us, gets out of his car, walks up to us three and asks, what us pretty young things are doing out so late? Me being the most clever and brave, replied to him with some bullshit story about how our friends were having a party, and they started drinking so we got uncomfortable and wanted to go to my house for the rest of the early morning. After I told him that, he stood there with his hands in his pockets, eyeing each of us up and down, all while looking back at his truck a few times. My friends and I definitely knew he was trying to figure out which one of us would be the easiest to grab and throw into his truck. I was the smallest of my two other friends, mind you, and he kept making eye contact with me over my other two friends. He stood there eyeing us for what felt like forever, but it was probably more like a couple of minutes. He eventually asked us if we wanted to ride home, or if just I wanted him to take me home. We replied that we were almost home when we didn't need it or want to ride. He stood there eyeing us up and down for another minute or so, deciding what to do, and he eventually got back into his truck without saying a word to any of us. When he drove off and was far enough away for us to start running, we jumped the small fence line in the high school and ran across the field to the tennis courts where we were startled by my boyfriend, my friend's boyfriend, and another guy friend of ours. We told them what had happened and we walked over to an alley that was on the end of the school and it led back to the sidewalk and main road that we had just been walking on. While doing so, we heard some screeching tires and a car speeding as fast as they could back up the road. We saw it was the guy that we had just encountered, speeding directly back to where me and my friends were just walking. He stopped his truck, got out and was walking around searching for most likely my friends and I. We all hid in some nearby bushes as we patrolled the sidewalk up and down. After a few minutes of searching for us, he got back into his truck and sped off in the opposite direction from which he came. We all ran to the other side of the school and took some inner neighborhood streets to get to my friend's house to make sure he couldn't find us if he was still on the hunt. We assumed that he came back around as fast as he could because he finally made the decision to pick one of us up and take off with us to do as he pleased. Thank God we dodged that creep that night. In 2019, I moved to a post-Soviet country for work. There is this American diner that I always go to on Saturdays for lunch. It's a one-of-a-kind place in the city, owned by this half-Cuban dude who loves the USA. Not surprisingly, the place attracts a lot of American expats who want to feel home. It takes me around 25 minutes to get there walking from my apartment, but as it gets extremely cold during the winter months, I always take a taxi that drops me off next to a big mall, on the opposite side of the narrow street where the diner is. The street is inaccessible by car. It's hard to describe it, but the best way to reach the restaurant's entrance is by crossing the fenced garden of an old wooden church. It was an orthodox church from the 19th century turned into a museum. It's now surrounded by massive office buildings. The garden is small. You can cross it in three minutes and the exit gate faces the restaurant. During winter, snow covers it completely. It was a Saturday morning, January if I recall correctly, and the snow was fresh on the floor. I was walking to the diner when I noticed unusual footprints in the snow, as if someone was walking in circles, back and forth for a long period. But there was nobody around and all of the office buildings seemed to be closed. I keep walking. All of a sudden, a man that was hiding behind the church reveals himself. He doesn't look hostile, but there's something extremely odd about him. He was wearing baggy jeans, a dirty hoodie, and a blue cap. It was extremely cold and this outfit was not the best for the weather. He approaches me smiling. He starts walking on my side. Hey there, he said in English. Hey? Where are you from? Don't be afraid, I like foreigners. The vast majority of the population there looks East Asian, so it's easy to tell them I'm not a local. But his English is surprisingly good. I keep walking in silence. You don't need to be my friend. I'm part of the couch surfing community. I'm a nice guy, look. He tried to show me something on his phone. Maybe his couch surfing profile page. Would you stay at my place? He says. 
No, dude, thank you, I say. And then he goes. Okay, would you give me some money to buy us both coffee? You don't have to come with me. At that moment, I was already in the front of the restaurant and casually opened the door to enter. He didn't follow me. Two weeks later, the same Saturday routine. Lunch at the diner and then back home. On my way, I decided to grab a coffee at a nearby place. As I'm walking to the shop, I feel somebody following me. It's him. Again, and wearing the same clothing. We made eye contact and he starts laughing. And then he proceeds to do an extremely creepy thing. He hides behind a bus stop that has glass panels on the sides and keeps staring at me. I mean, I could still see him, and he was being a complete creep on purpose. I enter the coffee shop and I tell the barista, Hey, there's a guy following me. The girl looked at me worried and says something to the security guard. It's common to see guards in all the shops here. The guy enters the shop. The moment the door closes behind him, the barista looks at the guard, who immediately removes him from the place. They were so fast that it almost seemed as if they knew him. Thankfully, I never saw him again. I just got off work. Today I worked 7am to 1pm. Around 10.45 a man walks in. I've had previous odd encounters with this man, such as seeing him walk behind me around my neighborhood and him hanging out near my street. I brushed those off since I live right next to where I work, and figured he lived there also, but I always kept an eye on him. Anyway, the man comes in and orders his usual pastry. I work at a bakery, and he tells me, I'm going to stay inside and eat my pastry. For anyone who doesn't know, my county is currently under lockdown because of the coronavirus, and all dining indoors is strictly prohibited. Not to mention, my bakery is tiny and there has never been any tables to sit inside. Only a coffee bar that has never had space to sit. I tell him, We're on lockdown, you can't really eat inside. His response chills me. Are you alone here? Yes. I respond stupidly, but quickly try to catch myself. But my coworker will be here soon. A complete lie. It's only about 11 a.m., and my coworker isn't scheduled till 1 p.m. when I'm off. Well, then no one will see me in here. He responds and goes back to eating his pastry at the coffee counter. I roll my eyes in and go back to work, not getting paid enough to care if he quickly eats his pastry and then leaves. 10 minutes pass and then 15. This guy is still in my bakery. I look over and he has finished his pastry and he has moved closer to the open space in the counter meant for employees to walk back and forth between the front of the store and the employees only side. Now, I'm starting to get uncomfortable. I quickly text my coworker, a 30 year old man who owns a lot of guns and treats me like his little sister, 911. I look over again and now the man is even closer and is now reading a book. He's putting the book in front of his face and peeking at me from above it watching me. Multiple customers come in and out during his stay. Every time I turn my back to him, he gets closer and closer and closer. Until eventually, he is halfway in our employee-only area. I begin frantically texting my coworker. He tells me that he's four minutes away. I finally make the decision to text my boyfriend. I had avoided doing so to keep from scaring him, but now I was terrified. I sat in the back of the employee area, watching this guy. I held a knife just in case he decided to come any closer. Just as he takes a step closer, my coworker busts through the door. A confrontation ensues and the man leaves the shop, but continues to sit in his parked car right out in front and he stares at me. I tell my coworker about the previous experiences I've had with him and he's had enough. He marches out to the guy's car and tells him next time he comes around, it'll be his last. My boyfriend pulls up at this point and joins in with the warnings. So Matthew, aka my stalker, let's not meet again. This all happened roughly around 3-4 years ago, 
but the experience has haunted me almost every single day since it happened. I'll start off by saying that, at the time, I was pretty young, single, and very keen to have my first experience with a guy. I spent a while looking through dating apps, talking to a few people until I finally came across a guy who seemed interesting, and we had a lot of things in common. So, I thought it would be a good idea to meet up with him, since we had been talking for almost a month. Now, even though I was only young, I wasn't naive or stupid. I was, and still am, a very cautious and paranoid person. But for some reason that day, I made what possibly could have been one of the worst decisions of my life. I invited him to come spend the night at my place. My parents were away for the weekend, and I had the place for myself. So, it seemed like the perfect opportunity for him to come over. He lived around three or four hours away from my place, yet he was eager and almost desperate to come and see me. So, he set off as soon as he had finished work, which was around 11am. This whole time he was driving to my place, I had the sickening sense of doom. Almost as if something was going to go very, very wrong. I almost texted him multiple times to tell him that I wasn't interested anymore. But I hesitated, as he was only 10 minutes away by this point. I jumped up as I heard his car pull up and I expected to be greeted by a smile once I opened the door. But he pushed his way through and continued to stare at me blankly. All while my two French bulldogs snarled and growled at him, which they never ever do to anyone. Things instantly seemed extremely odd. He followed me quickly to my bedroom and didn't waste any time in aggressively undressing me which I hesitantly went along with as this was my first experience with a guy. Especially as he was almost six years older than me, so I was pretty tense. Fast forward to a couple of hours later, he suddenly asked me if he could sleep in my room, which confused me, as it was only 5pm but I told him that it was fine, and I would continue to watch movies by myself downstairs. After an hour or two, I heard what sounded like furniture being moved around and the sound of him talking. So, I made my way upstairs and opened my door, to find him crouching in the middle of my room and breathing extremely heavily. When I asked if he was okay, he motioned for me to get on the bed, where he sat me on his lap and proceeded to place a blindfold over my eyes and put his hands around my neck lightly. I was already feeling extremely uncomfortable which worsened as he tightened his grip around my throat and said, Does anyone know that I'm here? Do your friends know who I am and what I look like or anything? I instantly answered, saying that my sister and friends who live nearby knew. And this was a complete lie, as I don't have a sister, and my friends were unaware but something inside of me forced me to say it. After minutes of awkward silence, he stood up to gather his things and I noticed that in his backpack he had tape, rope, and handcuffs, which at first didn't concern me, as I knew he was into that stuff. But looking back, I think it was intended for something much worse. All of a sudden he said, I think I'm going to head home. I have a long drive and I'm kind of tired. I didn't hesitate to let him out the door as I was already extremely uncomfortable. As he left, he failed to make any eye contact or say goodbye. And he raced off down the street as soon as he got into his car. I ran back to my room to check if he had left anything as he left in a hurry and I found a note on my desk with the words, Being nice is what saved you. At the time, I had no idea what the note meant, but now that I think about it, I seriously think that he had some very ill intentions towards me. I'm still angry at myself for even letting a stranger into my home, which is obviously a big mistake, and I immediately blocked him on all of my social medias. I'm just so lucky that I made it out alive. All I know is that he is now somewhere back in America. I really don't know why he was living in the UK at the time that I met him. But all I can say now is that I'm glad that he is many miles away from me. This happened a couple of years ago when I was around 15. And I was hanging out with my two friends, Miranda and Daisy, who were the same age as me. We were bored and there was nothing to do in our town, so we decided to go for a walk around this other town about 25 minutes from ours. The place we live in is pretty dangerous, so we usually did something with our parents around. But we thought that the three of us walking around by ourselves wouldn't be an issue, 
Plus, in this other town, it would be fine. Because we don't usually hear anything bad happening there, and it's thought to be pretty safe. We went to the outside shopping center, which had plenty of retail stores and restaurants, and we had a pretty great time at first. After we ate, we wanted to take a final walk around before calling my parents to come pick us up, and we start to walk towards this man who was just standing in the corner of the street with a green hat on and a mullet. The three of us were just walking and talking, and as we walked past him he said, Hi, how are ya? While looking at the ground, so we didn't think anything of it. We kept walking and we didn't answer him. He then said loudly, Do you want me to be afraid? And we looked back and he was looking at us this time. We were confused and we continued walking. We were talking to each other, trying to figure out if he was even talking about us and when I looked back, he was walking right behind us. I became extremely nervous, but my friend Miranda reassured us and said maybe he's just walking in our direction and not following us. Until we walked a couple of blocks and he was still right there. And that's when we walked by a bookstore Miranda said, Hey guys, didn't you want to check this store out? And took our hands and pulled us into the store. We pretended to be interested in some of the books, until we saw that he entered the store too and sat down in a chair. We were all extremely panicked at that point because this man was definitely following us. We left the store immediately and we continued walking a lot quicker now. And I looked back and sure enough, he came out of the store to follow us again. After walking some more, I saw a Panera Bread and I grabbed their hands and brought them in there. And this time, he didn't follow us inside. He kept walking. Daisy and Miranda were relieved and said, Great, let's go. But I was not convinced. And I told him to wait because he could just be waiting for us at the end of the street or something. A couple minutes later, he shows up and he is waiting outside of the door. We didn't know what else to do, so I went to the cashier and told her that a creepy man was following us. She went to her manager and she tells me that the manager called the cops. They let us sit down in their store and they give us some free food and tell us that we look pale and terrified as well, which of course we are. Eventually, a cop comes in to take our statements and gets an idea of what he looks like to go look for him. When he comes back, he says that they found the man, and it's clear that he had some mental issues going on, and they didn't want to detain him, but they reassured us that he wasn't in the area anymore. We called our parents and mine came to pick us up, Daisy was crying, Miranda and I were trying to make light of the situation, but it was still very tense. We were still kind of scared and anxious because we weren't sure if the cops even really made sure this guy left the area. But we got to my parents' car safely, and I immediately ordered some pepper spray from Amazon. It still gives me chills thinking about that day. To this day, his words, Do you want me to be afraid? Still confused me because uh, I don't know what he meant. And what was he even following us for? What was the goal? But thank goodness, we never had to find out.